Trucks and SUVs worthy of your consideration from years 22 through 24. Wouldn't you like to know which vehicles stand up to the trained scrutiny of a master mechanic? If so, you're in luck. Today we have Alex Stevens here, who is a seasoned automotive expert on our show. To be clear, we are not saying that these vehicles presented today are the image of perfection. Such a thing doesn't exist. We are simply saying they are worthy of mention on this video and have more pluses than minuses. We will also share the average cost of repair outside of annual maintenance so you know what to expect. The overall cost of ownership of these vehicles is generally good. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy. For the last 15 years, we've been publishing videos advising consumers about car buying tactics. We didn't say much about good or bad cars because we weren't mechanical experts and we wanted to stay in our lane. The lacking expertise made us leave the vehicle choice completely up to our viewers' discretion. But now, with the great fortune of having our own in-house automotive expert, we can also advise you on what types of vehicles you should consider. We'll be talking about more recent models, the 22 through 24 vehicles. Alex Stevens joins me in a moment. In this show, we are starting with the trucks first. SUVs will follow. I've had a chance to review this list too, and I've done some of my homework, so I'll be chipping in with added information as well. Alex, take it away. Let's start with the trucks that made the list first. All right, Alex, what do you got? Uh, these vehicles are in no rank or order, so they're just just how I put it all together for you. But, yeah, the first vehicle on our list is actually the Toyota Tundra. Um, as many people know, you've probably seen this funky-looking thing riding around. Um, right. But their new 3.5-liter twin-turbo um, has shown pretty good overall results. There's people I know who've owned these are obviously up in the higher 150, almost 200,000-mile range. And they've shown good reliability. Their 10-speed has been a pretty solid platform. Early on, I did. I will say they did actually have full-fledged engine failures with the with this engine, but that was a handful of motors, and they've kind of re- solved that. So, and I mean, if you look at the average repair cost, I mean, six hundred and six bucks a, a year for that, you know, six hundred range. Very affordable. It's pretty re- affordable, um, and. You know, this goes back to Toyota. We've talked about this earlier and even right. off offline a couple of times that, man, Toyotas have always had a track record. I mean, I know people who have five, 600,000 mile Toyota, four runners, and uh, they love their Toyotas. So, and I think obviously we've seen maybe a decline in some of these trucks and some of these SUVs from Toyota in the, in the last few years, but I still think they're a contender for a good, reliable vehicle long term for a person wanting to buy a truck. So will they will they cover all obstacles? No. So just something to note. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the overview of the Toyota, I think, in a big scheme of things, too, is that um, they've shown themselves to have good engineering. And if you take all that in consideration, these vehicles, are you going to have problems with them? Sure. Every vehicle has a problem. But I think a long-term ownership, we could be very happy with them. So. Right next on the list is the Ford F one fifty. You know, once again, a Ford. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about Fords mm-hmm. offline. Conversations about Fords, but you know, Ford's V eight. I mean, you you have a Ford, I yep. think, right? So um, you've been pretty happy with it over over the years from our conversations. But um, you know, Ford has come a long way. I mean, Ford trucks are definitely one of the higher reliable vehicles. I know tons of people who have them as well. Um, you know, they've been ranked pretty high by JD Power throughout the mm-hmm. years. Um, they've kind of perfected the overhead cam uh, V8, which has a lot of pluses to it and some minuses. But um, in the EcoBoost, I think it's finally getting to the point of high mileages. And something else, too, is when they went to that aluminum body, like – they're not seeing the corrosion issues or the rot that we see with steel body trucks. So, mm-hmm. like, that is a plus, but there are downsides to everything. Um, and they definitely rank high when it comes to payload capacities and so forth. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at it from like an annualized repair cost, like they're in the neighborhood of like that seven to eight hundred dollar range. So, mm-hmm. like, that's still not unreasonable for the average owner, you know. So, I think the Ford uh, has its place, just like sure. every other manufacturer, but. All right, then we got next the Ram 1500 with the Hemi V8. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about this before. I actually have one in my fleet that is a, it's a 19 model, 5.7 uh, Hemi truck. Uh, it's a Longhorn, and that truck is about the crest, like 205,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's never had any major engine work. It's had its typical, you know, common issues, but it's never had any major work. Um, so those trucks, I think you could easily see them in that, you know, 
150, 200,000 mile range. I mean, you can expect to get uh, a long high mileage out of those trucks, but it comes down to how do you treat that truck? Mm-hmm. Are you maintaining it? Are you driving it responsibly? Those are all things. Um, and in terms of average repair cost, I, I think those trucks are probably going to be in that neighborhood. All my data is showing like around that 700 to 800 range as well, maybe closer to 650 range, you know, but just something to take that you're going to see depending. Uh, are you living in winter conditions and all those kind of things? So I think uh, they're doing really well. And they also have a e-torque system, which out of an actual hybrid model, that mm-hmm. truck's had good long-term results from a, from an actual hybrid drivetrain, So, which is really, really nice to see. Um, awesome. So I would say Nets on our list, if that's okay. I would jump into this. Sure. You, know, you know I'm a GM guy. Yep. Um, I like all vehicles. I try not to be biased. but Chevy I, Silverado 1500. You know, lean, lean to those trucks. But, yeah, the 1500 Silverado – um, man, the 5.3 and the 6.2 have been kind of a proven platform. GM's um, had that same engine architecture and design, cubic inch size, for a very long time. And those trucks easily get to the higher mileages, you know, 200, 250, no problem. Obviously, we talked in our last shows and previous shows about some of those trucks having issues. Like mm-hmm. Ford had them, you know, Rams had them, and GM or Chevrolet have them as well, whether that be camshaft problems or oil consumptions. Like, obviously, you're going to have that, but, you know, they're, they've been they've shown themselves worthy, I think, to be contenders. Um, mm-hmm. And the repair costs on those, like, analyzed aspect is run that 700, 750 range for the basic things, you know. Um, goes back to maintenance, though. Like, how you treat it is how it's going to work. All right, Nissan Frontier. Yeah, uh, man, Nissan is similar to me in, in Toyota. They have good engineering, I think, mm-hmm. and they really are. They take the time to plan out in their engineering. Um, they have really good, consistent. They've used that same engine for a long time, and the nine-speed has been a proven engine. I think it's a three-point-eight liter V six in that in that truck, right. and that's a you know, it's simple. It's simple design in straightforward design really produces a long standing mileage vehicle like, any challenges from your opinion as far as power in a v6 versus you know a v8 which some of the other trucks have 100 percent. yeah i mean you're definitely are you going to get that torquey i mean there are v, v6s that make big power and can mm-hmm. do that but um yeah i mean you're just going to get like a, a lower power rate that's going to just get the job done mm-hmm. it's not going to like do it fast always but with that though you don't often run into some of these, you know, higher wear rates when you're really stressing that engine at high RPMs. So that is something to take into fit consideration, Kevin, but it has enough power to do the job that it's been tended to do. And awesome. because of that, you're going to have good wear ratings and good mileages out of those. And, you know, they're not super expensive to maintain. Like some people may see this from a different perspective, but like a V8 has two more spark plugs. Mm-hmm. You know, a V8 has two more cylinders. That means more fuel consumption, more wear, right? A V6, I mean, you could, if you look at it from that perspective, like, you know, overall, the cost of ownership can go down. You know, they're a little more fuel efficient. They burn oil differently, right? All those factors. So that repair cost is probably around 500 ish a year, give or take, you know, depending if they're having a major problem. So obviously, just different size engine, different responsibility. So. How about the Nissan Titan, the V8? Titan is a cool truck. I think they, you know, I've seen some nice ones. Longevity, I've seen those trucks, same thing. Back to that, I would say, proven engineering, long-term engineering. Those trucks are definitely getting up the high 200,000-mile range if they've been well-maintained. Um, they're not the most fuel-efficient truck, but they also don't have a major amount of repair cost. I mean, though that's probably right around that like 500 to 600 range, you know, give or take. I think those trucks are just fine. I mean, I know people who have those trucks that easily have 200, 250, like personally know them. So I noticed that your preference was the naturally aspirated truck versus the turbocharged. So how about the annual repair costs outside of maintenance on this truck? Um, that's about the 500, 550 range. You okay. know, they, they can be higher to the 600 range, but. So. Okay, so that's the trucks. We'll move from here on to the SUVs, and at the top of this list, and not in any particular order, starts the Toyota 4Runner. You know, 4Runner, man, proven track record right here. The 4-liter V6, those things are amazing. Great engines. Um, You know, once again, consistent, long-term, proven technology. I think you're seeing that here. Um, Mm -hmm. Average repair costs or something like that for that that particular engine, that's ton of aftermarket, ton of parts out in the world for that, been put, you know, through the paces. Uh, it's right around that 500, maybe 600 range. So Excellent. How about the Lexus GX? Lexus is just a fancy Toyota. Right. You know, they often share a lot of their engineering and 
engines and you know so forth. So I think you're going to expect the same thing you would from a Toyota. So those vehicles obviously are more luxury. So sometimes they have a little more bells and whistles. So but still reliable. I think you're getting a Toyota back style reliability. And I think the average repair bill for something for those vehicles over its life over a year is at like 700, 800 range. Um, so yeah, I mean, but just expect that like those are vehicles that just have a little more bells and whistles, and sometimes that comes with a high repair cost. But as far as like overall reliability, it's a real, real good vehicle. It's a Toyota. It just has a Lexus tag on it. So excellent. Next on the list is the Honda CRV, a very popular SUV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do we need to say any more? It has Honda in the line, you know. Yeah. So like Honda to me screams reliability. Like they go hand in hand. I mean, since the dawn of Honda's time. So the 1.5 is a great engine. Um, been very well proven. Um, you, I see Hondas all day long, all the time in that 200 plus range for mileage. Mm-hmm. So like, and I, I'm sure there's viewers who who've owned or currently still own Hondas that are in that range. So, um, and they have good proven re- hybrid systems too. Like mm-hmm. there's uh, some hybrid models out there that easily are in the high 150, 200 mile range. So, and they have a, they're a, a economical cars to repair. I mean, those vehicles are like that 400 to 500 range on an analyzed wow. model, you know, that's excellent. And like, they just don't break, you know, mm-hmm. um, I've personally owned a Honda and man, I basically just put oil in that thing and that was it, you know, oil and tires. So that's, that's a great awesome. vehicle. I actually just talked to somebody just the other day who lost their Honda CRV in the floods. Oh no. Down in Florida. And of course they have a shopping for another Honda CRV for them. Oh yeah. That's a so, great car. Yeah. I mean, I get they're it. in love with it. All right. Next up on the list is the Subaru Outback. You know, Subarus are, I love them. And I, I, I like, I would love to have one. Um, the one thing about Subaru is that they're super reliable, proven technology. Again, like most of the other vehicles list, but they, for what they are from a cost standpoint, they can actually kind of have a high repair cost. But mm-hmm. I see Subarus all the time in the high 200s. I've seen them up in the 300 mile ranges. Mm-hmm. Um, not a ton of issues. Their their maintenance cost is higher because they have a lot of time and belt cars. So like similar to Hondas, which Hondas started to go away from with some time and chains, but they're right on that six hundred ish range for repair bills are uh, analyzed. And some of that I think has to do with that time and time and belt and, and that engine. Two point five liter has been a good engine for them, but just something to note. So another very popular SUV is the Kia Telluride that made the list. Yeah, actually, you know, we talked about this way earlier in our conversations and previous shows that, like, we think of Kia, we think of Hyundai, we think of throwaway cars, and they've come a long way. Those are older models, right? okay? Um, Kia and Hyundai have made huge grounds and huge improvements in their engineering. Do they still have issues? 100%. They all, all manufacturers have issues, but they've really started to, like, perfect some of these vehicles that are manufacturing. And, man, the key to tell you right has been real nice. It's spacious. And I've seen I've seen data showing that they're getting into the high 150s to 200 miles, 1,000 um, miles. So, mm-hmm. And this kind of goes back to, like, a Honda, economically repaired. There's a ton of vehicles out there. Um, Honda and Kia kind of share um, a lot of parts. Right. So you're seeing that repair range around that 470 to 500 range. So awesome. Um, I think people will be happy and they have a good warranty. I mean, they have a 10 year, hundred thousand mile warranty, which I think is them trying to build that repertoire. Hey guys, we're going to stand behind these vehicles. So, all right, folks, that's a wrap on our show for today. The vehicles we discussed are consistently recommended by the people who own them by automotive experts like Alex Stevens and organizations like consumer reports and JD power. They strike a good balance between performance, comfort, and dependability. For those of you who want to buy one of these vehicles we mentioned today and you want to avoid the hassle of dealing with car dealerships, reach out to us and ask for direct help. On our website, thehomeworkguy.com, you can find a detailed write-up on our hassle-free car buying service. It's on the pull-down menu. Not only does it make life very easy for you, but our service leads the industry with the best ROI, return on investment average. You should also be aware that when you use our hassle-free car buying service, either Liz or myself will personally take every intake call. You get to talk directly to us, and we are the only show hosts on YouTube that offer this level of personalized service. Thanks to all of you out there in the audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. And if you want our direct help in your car deal and you have difficulty navigating the website, you can text Liz today at 701-441-3399. She will steer you in the right direction. Finally, for those of you not in the car market right now, but you would simply love to make your current vehicle 
Last as long as possible. That's super cool with us. You can get good, reliable information on new or used vehicles to think about for a future purchase, or you can get advice on best maintenance practices for your current vehicle. To do all of that, Alex Stevens sitting with me here today is available to do a 45-minute consultation. He is exceptionally talented and will help you get the most out of your current or future car. To read up about Alex, just go to our website and click on the pull-down menu and find Ask the Auto Expert. Alex Stevens is available at a low introductory price, just 75 bucks for that phone call, and he's beyond knowledgeable and talented. As we mentioned before, Alex has been joining me to give his take on cars to avoid and why, and if you own one of these bad cars that we spoke about in previous shows, how to care for it so it doesn't leave you stranded. To all of our longtime subscribers, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire hassle-free homework guy team. Thanks for listening.